Hello everyone, my name is Awam Dal Faris Yosufian. So today, my friend and I will talk about method to raise depression awareness. So, what is depression? Or we can say a uh, major depressive disorder. So, depression is a common and serious medical illness that has a negative impact on how you feel, you think, and your act. But thankfully, it's treatable. Depression causes feelings or sadness or a loss of interest in previously enjoyed activities. It can cause a variety of emotional and physical problems as well as a reduction in your ability to function at work and at home. So depression is a condition, not a passing phase. It is made up of a episode in which the symptoms last at least two weeks. Depression can last for weeks, months or even years. So please, don't take this easily. Now I will pass to my group members. Assalamualaikum. My name is Nora Sembagis binti Faizal and my matrix number is BB2116-1151. So our group topic is method to raise depression awareness. So let's talk about it. So the purpose of depression awareness. The depression awareness or raising awareness about depression is vital for ending stigmas surrounding it and other mental health disorders. Depression awareness also help people understand that they are not alone and that many support systems are available to help them tackle this disease. There are some examples about depression which is the death of loved one loss of a job, the ending of relationship, and more. It is difficult experience for a person to endure. It is a normal for feeling of sadness or grief to develop in response to such situation. Those experiencing loss of often might describe themselves as being depressed. And did you guys know that in October there are green ribbons in honor of depression awareness to recognize signs and symptoms of disease, prominent founding in research and treatment, and be aware of the importance of screening. Hello everyone, my name is Arif Aikal bin Abdul Hakim. So, as we really said, there are several myths about depression. Depression awareness may be raised through eliminating stereotypes about the illness. Don't be afraid to speak up when you hear someone spreading false information about depression. Let your body know that depression doesn't have on or off button and that medical therapy is frequently required for someone to feel better if they don't get off bed and start doing something productive. For weakness, is an example of depression myth. Depression, like asthma or diabetes, is a serial medical illness that has nothing to do with a person's character. Major life events, such as death of a loved one and the loss of one's job, may set off depression. Depression is rare and won't affect me. Depression may affect everyone, regardless of their gender, race, or age, and it can affect anyone at any time. It is a worldwide. It affects 131 million individuals and it's one of the most major mental health issues. So the next method to raise awareness about depression is by sharing information about mental health screening tests. For your information, there isn't a single depression test or screening that determines if someone is clinically depressed. Unlike lab tests that diagnose some illnesses such as COVID-19, a depression test is just one tool that a professional might use when screening for and diagnosing a mental health condition like depression. Mental health screening includes an assessment to determine the presence of symptoms of any kind of mental health disorder. The gated data from a mental health screening test is used to diagnose which type of mental health disorder is present, the changes in personality, and what is the proper treatment needed. Mental health screenings are a key part of youth mental health. Approximately 50% of lifetime mental health conditions begin by the age of 14. Mental health screenings allow for early identification and intervention, thus providing better health outcomes. Early treatment may also lessen long-term disability and prevent the use of suffering. 
Various resources are available to get screened for mental health including online mental health screening tests which give you a quick snapshot or you can directly reach out to professionals who specialize in mental health which include psychiatrists, psychologists, licensed clinical social workers and licensed professional counselors. So the question is, when should you see a mental health professional? If you are going through anxiety, mood swings, change in behaviors, eating disorders or other symptoms that you cannot seem to explain, maybe it's time for you to seek professional help for psychiatric screening. Next, the way to raise awareness in depression is by sharing the story either with friends or family. This is said because it will help a person to be more responsible in dealing with depression issues. Also, if you are experiencing depression, you will feel cal calmer if you share your problems with other individuals. For example, if you are suffering from depression until you are thinking of ending your life, find someone close to you to ask for help. In general, if a person is um, suffering from depression, he will be he or she will be stubborn and not listen to all the advice. This action is very bad to do. Therefore, sharing stories with other individuals is a great thing to do to reduce depression. Hello, my name is Muhammad Najib bin Ahmad. I want to talk about what is bully. Bully is unwanted aggressive behavior among school aggregate children that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. The behavior is repeated or has a potential to be repeated over time. Both kids who are bully and who bully other may have seriously lasting problem. In order to be consistent bully, the behavior must be aggressive and include an imbalance of power. It would bully use the power such as physically strength, access to embarrassing information or probability to control or harm other. Power imbalance can change over time and in different situations, even if they involve the same people reputation. Bully behavior happen more than us or have the potential to happen more than us. Bully include actions such as making third speeding humor, attacking someone physically or verbally and excusing someone from a group on Facebook. Type of bully, there are three types of bully. First, a verbal bully, second, social bully, and third, a physically bully. They are they and where bully happen, bully can access during or after school house where most reported bully happen in the school building. A significant percentage also happen in place like on the playground or the bus. It can also happen traveling to the traveling to or from school in the young in young neighbors or the internet. Hello and I'm Azli Bin Jonis. So for the next method to raise awareness about depression is spreading the hotline number that can help a lot of people that have been through the situation where they are needed emotional support. So so one of the hotline number that I would recommend it would be Befrienders. This hotline prepared a service where an individual can reach out for support if they ever need help. While you may think of a hotline as a place to call, however, email and face-to-face -face session also have been provided by them. So, the basic thing about this hotline is it's free and confidential. It can feel incredibly vulnerable to share all of your deepest and darkest thoughts going in your head. But every call is confidential and you can be totally anonymous if you'd like without having a pay a thing. Moreover, it's on, not only for people that have depression. They also provide emotional support talks, workshop season and seminars on listening skills, depression and stress, suicide prevention and mental health awareness. You can call for any serious crisis happening in your life. You don't need to only feel depressed to call the number. We all need emotional support and we all have things come up in life that feels unmanageable on our own. Sometimes we just need someone to talk to. So what to expect when you call in? It is you will have to face simple process that to get in line after you dial in. This is to make sure you are able to make the phone call more clearly and smooth. So after you are connected with a volunteer on Befrienders, you will you will or you should guide the 
conversation. This conversation is for you to talk through everything you that you are feeling. If you are sharing a story or talking about the issues you are dealing with, the, the volunteer will not push off for more details and you get to decide or what you feel comfortable sharing. You can talk, basically you can talk anything about it. So lastly, you can develop a safety plan and potential interventions. There may be a situation where thoughts uh, about depressing situation or suicide just won't leave your head, no matter how helpful crisis counselor is. If you're still concerned about hurting yourself, you and the volunteer will come up with a plan that feels right to you. So, in conclusion, the ultimate goal of this hotline is to de-escalate the situation such as they are active listeners so you would be comfortable in your current situation. And it also provides the uh, feedback to your question or to your stories by sharing resources and coping skills for you. However, the end goals of the calls depend on the individual. Some folks calls or text a hotline because they need support and not necessarily, necessarily because they are planning to hurt themselves. And I think that's okay. And that's all from me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hana Mesaramitisha. I want to talk about one of the methods reach out to the friend in need. Another method of raising the depression awareness is by reaching out to friend in need. A friend who is distressed needs someone who will actively listen to him or her. The active listener should put everything else aside and focus entirely on the person who is speaking. They can then ask open and question to learn more about their suffering. Also, when reaching out to friends, no matter how tempted, we are to tell our story and how we got through them. It is critical not to compare our experience with their. It is preferable to ask as to what they need from us. If they respond with something along the line of nothing, I'm okay, the greatest thing we can do for them is offer a few suggestions for things we would be willing to do without being pushy. However, if we are unable to do what they ask, we must express our regret and find another opportunity to do so. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Akida Rishpen Kamrudin. I'm metric BB2116124. So today, I would like to talk about the known design of and the symptom of depression. So the first one is feeling sad or empty. Mood change are one of the common of the most common sense symptom of depression. A, per, a person who has depression may feel sad or down for a long period. They may also say that they feel empty or unable to feel joy or happiness. Some people may describe this sadness as a despair. So the second one is feeling hopeless or helpless. Depression can make people feel hopeless, as true as is no possible, and to how they are feeling. So a person may also feel helpless. They may say or think that no one can help them to get better, and that, and that they will always feel depressed. So the last one is feeling worthless. A person who has depression may feel that they are worthless or have no meaning in their life. So, they may believe that they are a burden to others or that the world or their family is better without them. So, that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Namira Navila Binti Hazlan, matrix number VB2111-0174. And now we come to the final method of raising depression awareness, which is get help for yourself. As we all know, depression is a serious issue that has received a lot of attention, particularly from younger generations. Depression can have a significant impact on daily life. However, there are numerous effective treatments available to help you manage your depression symptoms. This is due to the fact that depression can have a wide range of consequences for yourself, your environment, and others. If you are experiencing mild to moderate depression symptoms, you may benefit from therapy with a trusted and qualified therapist. Many consultants will first try therapy before simply trying on medication. You can also help yourself by obtaining professional support using this method. Your therapist can assist you in identifying behavior patterns that contribute to your depression. This is due to the fact that they must record and track your emotions in order to ensure your consistency. A therapist can also assist you in developing methods to identify and avoid any triggers that worsen your depression.
Aside from that, you can help yourself by altering your lifestyle. Certain lifestyle changes can aid in the treatment of depression. Avoiding alcohol and other stimulants can have a significant impact on your depression. Some people may experience temporary relief from their depression when they consume alcohol or drugs. Eating nutritious food and staying physically active can help you feel better in general. Regular exercise can boost endorphins and relieve your depression. Last but not least, sufficient sleep is essential for both physical and mental health. So, for the conclusion, depression can be a short-term and long-term problem. Treatment does not com always completely cure depression, but treatment, on the other hand, frequently makes symptoms more manageable. Finding the right combination of medication and therapies to manage depression system is essential. If one treatment does not work, consult with your doctor. They can assist you in developing a new treatment plan that may be more effective in helping you manage your condition. If you have a loved one who is suicidal or has attempted suicide, make sure someone stay with them and immediately call 999 or your local emergency number. Alternatively, if you believe you can do so safely, transport the person to the nearest hospital emergency and please remember, don't take this easily and be safe. So that's all from our group. Thank you.